In this video, we're going over how to set up your Samsung Galaxy A13. Welcome back to another video. I'm your tech guide, Wayne. In the video today, I'm gonna to walk you through how to set up your Samsung Galaxy phone. I'm gonna show you some really cool little tweaks you'll wanna make just to set your phone up and make it easier for you to use it. So let's jump right in. The first thing you'll wanna do is increase your screen timeout time. If you notice, the screen goes dim very quickly. So if you want to increase that time so your screen stays on longer, what you'll wanna do is swipe down from the top of the screen and in the upper right corner, this is where you'll find your settings wheel. Tap on the settings wheel. From here, we're gonna to go to display and then we're going to swipe up until we get to screen timeout. And we're gonna change it from 30 seconds to either two minutes or five minutes. I usually like two minutes, um, but five is good as well. This way your screen will stay on longer without you having to constantly touch the screen. So really important tweak there and you know, help from driving you crazy from the screen going dim so quickly. Now moving on to our next tip, I'm gonna show you how to connect to Wi-Fi. So you'll wanna swipe down from the top of the screen and in the left corner, you'll find this switch. This is called a notification switch and it's just a shortcut to some of the different uh, settings that are most important. So to turn on Wi-Fi, you'll wanna tap on this little symbol right here. And once it's blue, that means that your Wi-Fi is on. And next you'll need to find your Wi-Fi network or the network you'd like to connect to. As an example, um, at your house or someone else's house, they'll have a name for their Wi-Fi network and you look for that name. Um, but like if you were out at a Starbucks or a Denny's, you know, it would probably just say Denny's or Starbucks. So you just wanna look for whatever the network name is to connect. And here I'm gonna connect to this one here. And then I'll need to enter the password so I can connect. So let me do that right now. So once you put the password in, we're gonna tap connect and give it a few seconds. And after that, we are all set. However, if you enter the wrong password, it'll keep you on that same screen and it should have a pop-up that's gonna say, wrong password, please enter it again. Um, so just as a note in case you still see that. You'll notice now in the upper right corner that now I have this Wi-Fi symbol here that's telling me I'm connected to the Wi-Fi. So now we're good to go. Next, I'm gonna go over how to change your wallpaper. So you can change the picture on the back of the phone. Now to do this, you're gonna hold down on the home screen and then tap on wallpapers. And every phone will come with a few preloaded wallpapers and then you can also take a picture and make that your wallpaper as well. Uh, for this case, I'm gonna tap my wallpapers and I can see these are a few of the different preloaded options. So I can either select one of these, like I can just tap this here and it'll ask me, do I wanna make it the home wallpaper or the lock screen? The lock screen is when you turn the phone off and then you turn it back on that first picture you see. So you can decide which wallpaper you want to go where. I'm gonna make it the home screen. It'll show you what it's gonna look like first and then tap set on home screen and home screen applied. Tap your home button here and there is our wallpaper. Now, next I wanna show you how to take a picture and make that picture your wallpaper picture. So hold down on the home screen, tap on wallpapers, and this time tap on gallery. And actually I have no pictures currently saved. So you know what I need to do? I'll need to go and take a picture. Now for you guys who have transferred pictures from an older phone, this is where all your older pictures will show up. And you can select an older picture that you already have taken as an option. But in this case, I'm gonna go home, tapping the home button and then tap on the camera. And I'm just gonna point and take a quick picture right now. Hit this little white button to take the picture. Tap the home button. And now I'm gonna go back to the wallpaper setting. So holding down on the home screen. Tap on wallpapers. 
tap on gallery and there's my picture. I'm gonna tap on it and then tap done. Tap home screen. That's what it'll look like. And then I'll hit set on home screen. And after a few seconds, here we go. Tap the home button and there's my new wallpaper. So that's how you take a picture and select it to make it your wallpaper. Now next, I wanna take you into the Galaxy Store right here on the home screen, you should see it. If you don't see this here, you're gonna swipe up and the Galaxy Store should be here. This is where all the apps are that are on your phone. Tap on Galaxy Store. So one important thing to note is that Samsung used to install a lot of their own apps on their phones. And over the years, they've installed less and less to save space. So you'll wanna go to the Galaxy App Store and just type in Samsung and you can get to all of their custom apps and you can select which ones would be most important for you to have on your phone. So I typed in Samsung, I'm gonna hit the search in the bottom right corner. And a few apps I would encourage you to download, one would be Samsung Music. So if you have music you transferred from an older phone, you can listen to them using Samsung Music. So tap on the little arrow going down and that will download that app to the phone. Samsung has a health app, which is great for keeping track of your steps and tracking your water and your food calories, a bunch of things just like that. So we'll tap the little down arrow to download that. If you haven't already transferred all of your files from uh, an older phone, like pictures, videos, text messages, wallpapers, your call log, you can do it using the Samsung Smart Switch app. And we're gonna just tap on the down arrow to download that app. That's how you transfer your files from an older phone using the Samsung Smart Switch app. Now, as we swipe up, a few more important apps. Uh, Samsung email is a good app. Now you can also use the Gmail app to sign into your email. I'm gonna go over later on in the video how to sign into your different email accounts, but um, Samsung has their own email app as well, just FYI. Next, we're gonna go over how to set up your fingerprints so you can unlock your phone using your finger. The first thing you'll need to do is swipe down from the top of the screen. In the upper right corner, tap on the settings wheel and we're going to swipe all the way up until we get to biometrics and security. Now, um, you can program the phone to unlock with a fingerprint or with your face. If you'd like to use the face recognition, you can simply tap the first option here. You can program it to your face, and then when you hold the phone up, it'll automatically unlock when the phone recognizes your face. Um, I'm gonna demonstrate the process for the fingerprints um, because it's a little more involved. Tap on fingerprints, continue. And the first thing it will ask you to do is to select a backup pin, password, or pattern. And this will work in the event that your uh, fingerprint sensor stops working or for whatever reason you can't unlock the phone using your finger, you will always have a backup method. So in this case, I'm going to select a pin and I'm just gonna use four zeros, continue, and then four zeros. You should obviously select some, some combination of numbers that's more secure, FYI. Next, we're gonna take the phone, we're gonna tilt it and just begin to tap the sensor. And you wanna try to move your finger different ways as you lift it up and down over the sensor so that it really learns your finger. The goal is that when you pick up the phone, it feels very natural. You just tap the button and it will automatically unlock. So we're almost done. One recommendation I have is always program more than one finger just because um, the finger you normally use could be oily from something you're eating. Um, you could have just washed it. Um, for whatever reason, something could happen and it's always good to have a backup fingerprint on file. So tap the add button and select another finger you would like to program. And I would recommend it be a finger on a different hand. So if you were to take the phone and hold it with your left hand, you might make your middle finger or pointer finger the other uh, finger that is programmed to unlock the phone. 
Okay. Next, we're going to hit done. Tap agree. And then it will ask you to sign into your Samsung account. Now, if you don't have one, don't worry. Um, I do encourage you to set up one because it does unlock additional features and customizations on the phone and it doesn't cost you anything. It is totally free. So if you want to set up one, tap the create account button here. If you already have one, you can tap the box for email or phone number and enter your sign information. Or if you're like me who already has one set up and it's linked to your Google account, you can simply tap continue with Google and then you can tap um, the, your Google account and then it will use that to sign you in. Now, sometimes it will ask you to send a one-time pin. So whatever phone number you have on file with your Samsung account, it might send you a text message asking you to verify your account. So just look out for that six digit number and enter it on the screen and then it should sign you into your account. Now, uh, a few other cool things you can do with the fingerprint sensor is you can use it to sign into uh, websites that have passwords by simply enabling this option here. You can also use it um, for other Samsung related account options by turning this feature on too. And it will ask you to put your uh, password in first for that. And that's it. The fingerprint sensor is officially set up. Now, if I turn the phone off, um, I don't even have to wake up the phone. I can just simply put my finger on the button and it'll automatically unlock the phone. Pretty cool. All right. The last thing I want to go over is emails. How to sign into your email account. Now, one important thing to note is you can use the Gmail account to sign into other accounts that are not Gmail. I know. Surprising, right? Who would have thought? Let me show you. So on the home screen, you'll have a Google folder. You want to tap in the box and go to Gmail. And the first time you open it, it'll look like this. And on this screen, it's showing you all the different email types that it will support. So Gmail, obviously Google, Hotmail, Live, Yahoo, Exchange, Outlook 365. So it'll work with quite a few different types of email accounts, but it doesn't work with them all. So I want to show you a backup option in the event you don't see your email type on the screen. Tap the home button, go to the play store and you'll want to do a search like I just did here. Uh, type in at sbcglobal.net and you can do a search and it will bring up all the email accounts, uh, all the email apps that will support that email type. So in this case, uh, I previously downloaded this option here. And so if we open it, we can then sign into that email type using this separate app here. You would just tap add another account. And these are all the different options that it will support. So AOL, iCloud, on mail. SBC Global is technically an, an AT&T email type, so you would tap AT&T for that and then enter your username and password. And that's it. Now, the very last thing I want to show you is something that's going to help a lot of you out. Um, and it's a tweak for your home screen. So hold down the home screen, tap on settings and come down to the option that says lock home screen layout. Now by enabling lock home screen layout, this will stop apps from being moved on the home screen. So for example, if I, if I try to move this messages app here, I can't because the screen is locked. So once you have your phone set up and you have all the apps that you would like on the home screen, you'll want to go and enable that feature again, hold the home screen, tap settings and lock home screen layout. By doing that, it will make it so none of your apps are going to move on the home screen. Now, as I turn it off, guess what? Now I can move this by simply holding down on it for one second and then dragging it up just like this. Now, some of you have 
been a victim of this, you set your home screen up, you put certain apps in certain places, and then you might give your phone to someone else or to a kid or your phone is on in your pocket and all of a sudden everything gets shifted around and you can't find anything. So I encourage you, set your home screen up the way you like it and then lock the screen. And you might find that you have an app like OneDrive that you might say, I'm never gonna use that. Well, hold down on it. It's gonna give you a list of options and you can remove it from the home screen by just tapping the little trash can. And there it is, it's gone. And now you can swipe up and say, hey, you know what? I would love to have my calculator on the home screen because I use calculation calculators a lot. Hold down on it, drag it down and let it go. And now you'll be able to move the calculator in that spot. I'm gonna drag my Google Chrome icon here and one last thing I love to do is to move my settings wheel on the home screen as well. So just hold down on it, drag it down, let it go. And that's how I wanna set up my home screen. Now I can hold down on the home screen, go to settings and I can lock the layout. So now none of my apps can be moved and that's it. So I hope you guys found that helpful. My goal was to be thorough and just walk you through some really cool tips that are gonna help set your phone up and make it easier for you to use it. So if you found this helpful, please um, leave me a comment down below and let me know what your favorite tip was that I shared. And also if there's anything else you'd like to learn, leave it down below. Make sure you hit that like button, favorite, and share the video. And if you're not a subscriber, hit that subscribe button and stay tuned for more videos. Take care and as always, have a good one.